Everybody, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Facebook Live feed. My name is Stacy Wallace. Larry Wallace here. <laughs> we are on a wonderful track through our book, Unleashed and Anointed for Business, a kingdom business. Uh, if you are passionate about being used and sent out by God in the workforce and knowing how to decipher how to negotiate on a different level, well, then this book is for you. Last night, what? Yeah, it was an amazing M Women meeting. We had lots of women. M what meeting? We had three yeah. dudes that showed up. We got dudes showing up to our M Women meeting. They're like voyeurs. <laughs> they sit back in this back table right here. And well, they the, husbands, the husbands are saying, look, my wife is being changed. Yeah. I want to find out what's going on there. And so they come and, oh my goodness, they're, they were empowered men. They're going to come back tonight, actually. Both, yeah, both and one said, of them got filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit last night. Just, yes. you know, the crumbs from the master's table. <laughs> I love really? it. Seriously? <laughs> I love it. And you know what I love about it is hunger equates mm -hmm. to feeding. Yes. God's going to feed you right where your hunger is. He's going to give to you. If your hunger and thirst is for righteousness, you will be filled. Mm -hmm. And I love the way God, it doesn't matter what the setting is. I mean, it could be... A girl setting could be, I remember the song I wrote, Cinderella, A Dream mm -hmm. Come True. Mm -hmm. We had as many men, just that, that song just changed their life. The word I was going to say is rectum, but I don't really like that word. So mm -hmm. just changed their life. I was reading through our newsletters. Um, one of the newsletters here was talking about a man who listened to that song and he was driving. He was oh, a complete... Yeah non-christian i remember yeah but his girlfriend had the song well his girlfriend kind of was part of the mentoring program as well yeah and mm -hmm. she uh brought the cinderella cd home now the cinderella cd was interesting we didn't put it on an album we sent we we released it, it as a single but on the second track of the single i told my testimony of going through divorce and suicidal mm -hmm. depression and all of that and then i gave people an opportunity to repent give their life to the Lord and then encourage them to really connect in the faith. Mm -hmm. So uh, she had it in the car mm -hmm. and he got mm -hmm. in her car late one night and it was playing. And at first he was like, what is this? Who is this? And he had heard her talk about me because she had gone to a concert. We had gone to her hair studio mm -hmm. and um, anyhow, he's listening to it. And he said, at first I was going to turn it off, but something said, keep listening. So I kept listening through the song and then you started talking. So the second track is me telling my story. And he said, and I am now this guy was known notorious Italian guy. Not that this is stereotypical of Italians, but this guy was an Italian that liked to speed. He was a tough dude. Too. He was a tough dude, mm -hmm. but he started listening to the testimony. And while he was listening and going, over a hundred miles an hour. It was a dark road. It was at night. So he liked to do that, but he was going really, really fast. He said, while he was driving, listening that it got to the part where it said, if you do not know Jesus, I want to introduce you to my friend. And at that time I pray a prayer. He said, while I was praying the prayer on the CD, his hands started to burn. And he said the prayer with me on the CD mm -hmm. and his hands started to burn and he started to cry. And between the burning hands that he couldn't figure out why his hands were on fire and the crying, he slowed down. And when he slowed down, what was it? A he came around a corner and there was a car sideways in the road who had just hit a moose. Okay, so this is up in Canada, it by the way. It was blocking both <laughs> This lanes. wasn't here in Texas. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but just hit a moose, and it was blocking both lanes. If he was to continue like you normally would have at the rate of speed that he was going, he would have broadsided that car without... He would have come around that corner and... Yeah, he had no uh, time to stop if he was going that same And so he speed. sent in his testimony to us, and we put it in the newsletter. But what was great about it is... That's how God works. It might, you might, like those guys like, that came last night, it wasn't even, probably they weren't coming going, man, I really want to grow. <laughs> that guy didn't get in the car, man, I really want to give my life to the Lord. But God has a way of just stepping into your life right where you are. Mm. And let me, and that's what this video may be this morning for you, is just stepping right into your world and saying, you may not think you're pursuing me, but I'm pursuing you. And I love that. Yeah. We're getting all kinds of testimonies and messages of people coming in who, uh, really, a lot of people don't go to church. Yeah, but they watch us. Yeah, and I love that. A lot of a lot of Christians who love the Lord, love God, but don't necessarily go to a brick and mortar on Sunday 
for worship. But they are a part of the church, the yeah. body of Christ. So they mm -hmm. find themselves getting, some people live, we had people last night that they live well over an hour away. Mm -hmm. um, so they're very remote. They live out on a um, very, very, very small town. So we just love the fact that you're tapping in and mm -hmm. our heart is not to do like what you would do in a church building. We don't want to just feed you. Mm -hmm. We want to challenge you to go feed yourself. We want to teach you how to grow up in the faith so that when you do go on a Sunday, you go there for a worship experience of what you can give just to get filled back up and to experience new life. But really during the week, we want to teach you how to feed yourself with the word of God and apply it to your everyday business life. Yeah, it's so important. You got to get in the word yourself. Open up the Bible yourself. I mean, even if, even if it's you don't want to carry around a Bible. You, there's a great Bible app um, provided by YouVersion that you could download and be able to not only read the Bible, but go do devotions every day. They have a million devotions on different topics and stuff. So there's plenty of ways that you can get into the Word, but just we encourage you. Everything that we share here on this, on this um, podcast and on this uh, Facebook Live is to encourage people to get in the word for themselves because it's so important you have to know the word yourself don't take somebody else's word for it don't Not even, even take ours. our word for it right get in the bible yourself and read yeah, so we're, we're not here to make this comfortable. This is what we've grown to know. Because <laughs> there's days where we'll push in and then I'll be like, oh my word, that was so difficult. <laughs> because I'm like, oh, we want to be happy and we want to talk jokes and we want to be motivational. And then there's days where that's just not the vein that God has us in. There's days where God just has us really stirring you up. One of the people, one of the men that watches regularly, I think it might have been Randy, shout out to Randy. I think he said, it, it stirs me up. I feel like it's stirring something up on the inside of me and making me want to study. That's a win. That is a win. Mm -hmm. If it just stirs you up or makes you feel good, not a win. If it stirs you up and makes you want to study the word for yourself. And then go apply the word. To ching yeah, that's, that's really what we're looking for. Today, we have a great topic. Again, we're going through. I just want to encourage you to share this video with your friends. Um, we want to reach as many people as possible. And you guys know we are flagged by Facebook, so we are not able to do any boosts or promotions of the video. So yeah. we wait for you guys to share it. So mm -hmm. if you guys share it with your friends and so like it, comment, share, that would be very helpful. It would be very helpful. Okay. We are actually on chapter 20 of this book. Uh, going through it. If you guys don't have the book, I encourage you to go through it. All the scriptures, if you're wondering where are they getting all this, where's it coming from? We have all the scriptures in here. Every chapter is broken down into little bite-sized pieces so that you could literally, it's 30 chapters. You could do this as a 30-day devotional. Just every day there's, just read, it's just like a two-page chapter. It's real simple. But we're breaking it down for you because we want to put a little more narrative around it so that we encourage you, maybe shake you up a little bit, uh, get you to dig into the Word of God for yourself. Today, we are talking about supernatural communications. Now, we, we, the title of today is a U.S. linguist who discovers a new language. Mm -hmm. And really what we want to do is we want to teach you how to raise your communication skills, not just with others. We just finished the seventh week of module one of our M Women group. Uh, we have seven modules. You guys pray with us because we want to put these modules into magazines. We want to also get into a studio of... There's one. You got the mock-up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why are you pointing your finger like that? It's confusing me. Well, there's a mock-up. It was like of... a dog. I was following the point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought since you were talking about it, we kind of made a little bit of a mock-up to kind of... Yeah, to show you that um, every one of the modules, we want it to have a magazine and um, to it. And in the magazine, it has the articles, it has the weekly application, the where you could write in it. But most importantly, we want these to be on coffee tables, mm -hmm. not just like a book. I mean, we could easily put these into seven books because every, like this topic was um, effective communications, teaching you how to speak, eye contact, communication skills. Why do we do that? How to do a 45 second or 30 second introduction of yourself. Well, not only is it great for your marketplace connection to get a raise, to be able to do better interview skills, to be able to communicate effectively. If you're sitting like today, I'm going to the Republican uh, big luncheon and I know I'm going to be sitting by somebody and they're going, what do you do? 
That's your 30 second elevator pitch mm -hmm. that you want to be able to do, not just so that you introduce yourself, but so that you back in them into saying, hey, do you have a card? That's ultimately what you're looking for. So you can connect with them, hopefully witness to them, give them the faith. But we want these to sit on the coffee table of people so that we can um, have these kind of everyday communications backed by the word of God. There's so much scripture. There's so many stories, testimonies, examples. So pray with us that we are able to get those. Uh, we, we need the graphics done. We obviously it costs a lot of money to do magazines and then we want to make them available. We try to make everything available for free in what we do. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys for praying for that. Today we're going to talk about increasing your communication skills supernaturally. Now there was a movie mm -hmm. that we watched. We talk about it in the book, but Arrival, I don't know if you guys have seen this movie, but it's basically this lady, she is a, a U.S. military linguist. Mm -hmm. That's a lot to say. Right. But um, she is the best in the world at being able to interpret mm -hmm. languages from other planets or whatever. From, oh, from other countries. From other countries. Yeah. She and was like the best of the best, and she was a professor and all that. Really smart lady. Mm -hmm. And this spaceship lands and has these beings that are com clearly communicating. They're not volatile, they're not forceful, but they are definitely, they got their tentacles on, they have them in encapsulated into this cell kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to communicate, they're blowing out this ink stuff with shapes and things, and no one can understand the message. Mm -hmm. So this lady is brought in because she's the best of the best linguist in the world. And she's brought in to interpret this language of these aliens. Mm -hmm. Very cool movie. So she spends all this time trying to figure out, you know, how can we establish what the communication patterns are? And most of the movie is, is her trying to figure this language out. And the interesting thing about it is there's languages, right? Mm -hmm. There's a language that is an earth language. There's a language that is this weird alien language. And here's what's interesting is in this chapter that we talk about, we are talking about supernatural languaging. Mm -hmm. We're talking about your language between you and God, the God of the universe, not some alien, not some strange extraterrestrial being, not even like your wife, which sometimes seems extraterrestrial probably, but we're talking about a communication between you and the creator of the universe. And when we talk about that, now a couple of days ago, we talked about your personal prayer language between you and God, which is called speaking in tongues. That's a part of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Now, praying in the Spirit, having this communication in the Spirit is not what gets you into heaven. That's called repent and be baptized. But when you are baptized, you also receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Which means if you read all the way through the New Testament, you will see that God has given us a supernatural ability to communicate beyond our intellect, mm -hmm. beyond out of, out of this world, beyond our mind. So praying in the Spirit, personally, when I pray in the Spirit, when I pray like that, that's me, between me and God. Mm -hmm. So when I'm in my office and I pray that way, or I'm in the bathroom, or I'm shopping. I do this all the time. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's kind of habitual for me. I'm always praying. And what I'm doing is I, when I stop and listen, I get downloads from God. Mm -hmm. That's how I might all of a sudden catch out of the corner of my eye, somebody in a red car. And I just feel this sensitivity, go over and pray for that person. And lo and behold, that person's just gone through a divorce or something like that. That's getting spiritual downloads personally. So it equips me to do what I need to do on behalf of the kingdom. Now there's, there's really three functions of what's called tongues. And we today talk about three of the gifts of the spirit, the gift of tongues, the interpretation of tongues and prophecy. Mm -hmm. Now those are three gifts of the spirit and, and we're breaking down all the gifts of the spirit. Remember the gifts are for the edification of the church. Now you don't have to have a gift to pray for people. That's just a part of being a disciple. Right, You pray for people. Jesus said, lay hands on the sick, they will recover. These signs and wonders will follow all that believe, them that believe. That means you, that means me. That means you don't have to have the gift of healing in order to pray for people. It means it should be a part of your everyday disciple walk. However, there are specific gifts given for the purpose of edifying and training. 
Now that is a gift of healing. Mm -hmm. Being able to know that I have a supernatural gift of healing means now I am actually responsible with that gift to open it up, take it out and use it to teach other people how to go out in the marketplace, lay hands on the sick. Mm -hmm. The gift of tongues means that not only do I have my private prayer language, which everybody can pray in the spirit. I'm going to read you scripture here that speaks to that. But there is a gift of tongues, which is for the edification of the body of Christ. It's inside the church. The gift of tongues is to be used inside the church. And that's where somebody might give, um, pray in the spirit. And then there will always be an interpretation. If it's just the praying in the spirit, that's really for the individuals. That's not for the edification of the body. That's more of a personal flow. So when the gift of tongues is utilized in the church, it should be matched, Paul says, with prophecy so that non-believers can understand mm -hmm. so that there can be an equipping. So the whole mm -hmm. point of it is to download messaging, just like that lady on arrival, right. to download and then interpret what is being said. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, one day inside of the church, I was praying after church for some people that had come forward for prayer. And I was praying in the spirit. There were a number of people gathered around and I was praying in the spirit. And all of a sudden, actually there was a, another lady that prayed in the spirit too. And all of a sudden I started seeing dolphins. It was the weirdest thing. I started seeing dolphins jumping in the ocean. Mm -hmm. And so while we're praying in the spirit, and this lady is, is speaking in tongues, mm -hmm. I began to see this. So I began to interpret what was being said. This isn't like an interpretation of a straight up language. So in other words, if I, I actually led somebody to the Lord after our last, I mean, somebody to receive uh, their spiritual number of people, actually spiritual language after we talked about tongues on the last two days ago. And when they began to pray in the spirit, it sounded Israeli. Mm -hmm. So they may have influence in the realm of Israel or Middle Eastern countries. And that might be something that is why theirs sounded that way. Mm -hmm. There's times when I pray in the spirit in my personal prayer language, and it just sounds like gibberish. And then there's times where it sounds like Chinese and it's Chinese. I don't know because I don't speak any of those languages. What I do know is it is something important to God. Mm -hmm. I just allow it to flow out. I don't try to figure it out. It is a spiritual language. Now, inside of the church, however, it needs to be interpreted. Mm -hmm. So what is that? Well, I want to read something to you. 1 Corinthians 14, 13 to 18. Uh, this is where Paul talks. He says, for this reason, the one who speaks in tongues. Now, remember, Paul is admonishing the church here. And I encourage you to look this up. Just read 1 Corinthians 14. But here I'm going to read 13 to 18. Mm -hmm. He's admonishing the church, teaching them about the gifts of the spirit. Now, these are things that we don't talk a lot about on Sunday morning because it's not a real motivational setting unless you have hungry people who want to grow in the gifts of the spirit, right? So for this reason, the one who speaks in tongues should pray that they may also interpret what they say. So let me go back. I'm praying for the lady. I start to see dolphins, right? So as I'm praying in the spirit, I see dolphins. I say to the lady, I don't know if this means anything to you, but I'm seeing dolphins jumping through the ocean and they've been captive, but now they are being set free and I just see them being loosed. And so they're, they're going out in the ocean with a new sense of freedom. She just starts bawling and crying and, oh man, this is a lady who had come forward to give her life to the Lord and, and really have a new beginning in life. Well, she starts crying. She says to me, you're not going to believe this. My house is covered with dolphins. She said, I've collected dolphins since I was a little girl. They're all over. Now, how would I know that? How would I know this strange woman? I've never met her before in my life. She comes forward in an altar call and suddenly I'm talking about dolphins. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that, but the Holy Spirit did. And that is the purpose of speaking in tongues inside the church mm -hmm. to bring edification, help somebody have a greater sense of belief. Listen to this again, verse 14, for if I pray in a tongue, it is my spirit praying, but my mind is unfruitful. So what shall I do? Well, I will pray in the spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding. So Paul was saying, you want to pray in the spirit. You want to have that spiritual language, 
but also pray in English with your understanding. I'm going to sing in the spirit. But I also will sing with my understanding. It's a new season, right? So I'm going to in spirit and in knowledge or understanding. Verse 16. Otherwise, when you are praising God in the spirit, this is now talking inside the church. How can someone else who is now put in the position of an inquirer or a non-believer who walks in the church say amen to what you're saying or what you're giving thanks for? Since they do not know what you're saying, you're giving thanks well enough. You're, you're, you're honoring God with your prayer language, but no one else in the church is edified. It's just between you and God and you got all these people just praying in the spirit, but nobody's being edified in their understanding. I thank God, Paul says in verse 18, I speak in tongues more than all of you. So if you're wondering, is this a thing? Yes, Paul is saying, I speak in tongues more than all of you. But when I'm in the church, he says, I would rather speak five intelligible words to instruct others than 10,000 in tongue. Brothers and sisters, stop thinking like children. Now, in regard to evil things, he says, be an infant. Don't study, don't look at, don't go to movies of, don't gossip about the things of this world. But in your adult thinking, think on these things, the things of the spirit with other tongues and with the lips of foreigners, I will speak to the people. So what Paul is saying here, verse 22, tongues then are a sign not for the believers inside the church, but for the non-believers, because it shows that we as human beings have the ability to tap into a spiritual language and then download it, interpret it because we sense in our understanding what God is trying to say, dolphins, dolphins, dolphins. Mm -hmm. And then we speak it out. Then all of a sudden, the people that were with this lady, they were, I mean, she obviously was a non-believer when she came. They are like, oh, God is here. Mm -hmm. And it gives them the ability to believe. Mm -hmm. So where you're at right now, so that's, let's just talk, break down the, the three functions or the three gifts that we're talking about here. Number one, let's go back real quick. Last two days ago, we talked about, or actually Friday, we talked about the private prayer language. Mm -hmm. Today, we're talking about the gift of tongues. That means when you speak in tongues, the gift of prophecy, that means when you prophesy inside of the, I mean, the gift of interpretation, that means when you interpret what was just said. And then finally, prophecy. Paul said, I would rather you prophesy than all of that. Mm -hmm. Now, what is prophecy? Prophecy uh, is when you're able to download and see and hear what God wants to happen for the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, a prophet is often called a watchman. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be, have the gift of prophecy to prophesy any mm -hmm. more than you have to have the gift of healing to heal. But when you have the gift of prophecy, it's so that you will admonish and teach others how to download and see the things of God. So this is a big misunderstanding inside of the church where people think that the gift of prophecy means that's all who should profit or the mm -hmm. gift of tongues. That's all who should speak in tongues or the gift of healing. No, the gifts are for the edification of the church. That means you're actually a teacher. And all of these gifts are freely available for everybody. There's not like one person is given one gift and is not allowed to have another gift. That's not true. All these gifts are available for everybody. It's just you have to use them. You have to exercise And hunger gifts. for them. So it would be like, I think everybody's supposed to know mathematics, right? It's important. It's important. Mm -hmm. But not everybody's going to be a teacher of mathematics. Or a physicist, right? Yeah, I think, I think it's really important for people to know that. Mm -hmm. You know, it actually reminds me. I'm not going to be a teacher. This is, this is, this is. <laughs> you can't even say the word. <laughs> probably shouldn't teach it. No, you probably can't you it. can't say the word. You shouldn't <laughs> be teaching the topic. topic. But uh, that reminds me, I have a friend who is, uh, he's a part of our men's group. And, you know, he utilizes, his team utilizes, and, and honestly, whenever it came up, it, it, it floored me because I, I hadn't, uh, up until this point, I didn't know this man that well to know what his background was. I knew he was a, a doctor. I knew that he had um, served in the military. He was also, uh, he was a, a CEO of a company who at one time had uh, worked specifically for the military. Now he does everything civilian, but um, older gentleman, but his company works in processing information. 
And some of the biggest computers, supercomputers, artificial intelligence is what this particular company deals with. And, um, and so we were talking about problem solving. This was the topic. And this isn't a Christian men's group or anything like that. It's just a, it's just a, marketplace, a, a marketplace networking group for- That has Christian well, men in it. Yeah, that, has, <laughs> that obviously has Christian men in it. And so he was talking about problem solving. And you know, when you're dealing with supercomputing and, and artificial intelligence and quantum, quantum physics and quantum computing- You're um, probably talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this, this is the Why topic. Why'd you laugh out loud? It's okay. <laughs> so we were we were um, having a discussion about problem solving, and so he said in the middle of the conversation, he says, "You know what my guys do?" He says, "When we reach a problem that we can't solve, my guys will stop. They will pray in the spirit until they get an answer." And he says, "100 percent of the time, they get an answer, and then they're able to move on." I about fell out of my chair. One of the most <laughs> powerful groups on a governmental level. This is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And they've tapped into the secret. Yep. And I believe that if, if they can do that, if you're trying to figure out your marriage, you're trying to figure out something at work, you're trying to figure out how to put that plan together to present to your boss, you're trying to... Praying in the spirit, your personal prayer language is about you being able to get downloads from God, being able to connect with Him and let Him drop into what human intellect cannot teach you. So when you think about that, the gifts are for edification and teaching and training. What Larry and I are doing, we are teaching you and training you mm -hmm. right now. We've taken out of the toolbox the gift of prophecy, the gift of tongues, and the gift of interpretation. And we're teaching you through that gift. Now we're encouraging you to take what you're learning right now Go to 1 Corinthians 14, 13, for example, 1 Corinthians 14, and just study it for yourself. Become not just a reader of the word, but a doer of the word. There's so much, there's trillions and trillions of dollars being spent right now on that Space Force program. Space for Force, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and really what it's all about is how can we intercept the communications that are going on in a space realm Mm -hmm. that other countries are trying to attack us or could potentially be wanting to attack us. How do we get up and we create a whole new branch of government, really, mm -hmm. that deals in the space realm? Mm -hmm. So just like we've got the Army, Navy, Air Force, there's Space Force now that's trying to be implemented. Mm -hmm. And I find it interesting that we as human beings have this incredible desire to dominate on the earthly realm. Mm -hmm and even on the first heaven realm. Mm -hmm. So you've got earth, if you guys remember when we talked about the glory of God a couple of weeks ago, we broke it down on the whiteboard and really talked about the different realms and how the earth was created. You've got the earth realm, which is where we've got banking systems and we've got healthcare systems and those things that are on the earth. And then we've got the next realm, which is space, basically mm -hmm. sky, heaven. Um, those words are equated to each other. So you've got the cosmos, and then you've got the heaven, second heavenly realm, which is where we war, Ephesians 6, study it for yourself. We war not against flesh and blood. So the first heaven, which is sky, and the earth, that's flesh and blood. People, humans, systems, things that are under gravity or things that are in the space realm. Those are, we war not against those. Even though we might spend trillions of dollars on healthcare, trillions of dollars on trying to stop things, we war in another realm. So then the, I'm probably freaking a lot of people out, but I encourage you to study it. So then you go to the heavenly realm where principalities and powers of darkness combat, mm -hmm. right? So even though we have this space force in place and we might be able to intercept China's nuclear weapon, it's not gonna stop evil mm -mm. because the only place to stop evil is in another realm. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna get into all that, but I think it's a great study. Maybe we'll do it one day if you guys wanna learn more about that. There's but a great movie the, about that too, War Room. <laughs> right, that's a gr great, great, where that woman goes into her closet and she sees what's going on in her family mm -hmm. and she prays in the realm of the heavenlies. Mm -hmm. And because she's doing that, she's able to see things change in her family. Uh, obviously the next, 
realm is where God's throne is. So, and that's where we, when we want to live in eternity. Mm -hmm. So all of that to say, I know it's a lot of information, but this is why having your prayer language, understanding the gifts of the spirit, understanding, asking God that you might prophesy, be a seer, be a watchman, be able to see, and then teach other people how to see and hear. Uh, one of the greatest gifts that uh, God has blessed my life with is that gift of prophecy, mm -hmm. able to see things before they happen. Even in that movie Arrival, yeah. although it's not a spiritual movie in no, any way, it's not a they're, Christian movie they're in tapping way. in to some spiritual principles mm -hmm. because she was able to see into the future and then come in her dreams right. and then be able to come back and live that out with greater passion and effectiveness. Yeah. So there's, there's the communication um, involved in there and then there's the prophecy involved. Now she wasn't speaking in tongues or anything like that. Although the aliens, maybe they were speaking in tongues, but there was not that, but she was interpreting what the she aliens was interpreting were what they were saying. And so, so it's a, it's a, a movie that Hollywood has used these supernatural gifts that are actually talked about in the Bible and they made a movie out of it that has no reference back to the Bible. I don't even think they know they did. Yeah, I don't, they may not even know, <laughs> but they tapped into something that is, is applicable to the topic today. Yeah, and so we pray today for you that you will hunger and thirst to know more about God. You will hunger and thirst to be able to download things in the spirit that are not of this world. Don't be on this... Most Christians today only believe what they've been told at Sunday school mm -hmm. or Sunday church. Mm -hmm. They haven't gone and studied it for themselves. So they believe whatever that person's telling, they believe that everything that person's telling is right. What we're challenging you to do is look it up, study the word of God, meditate on it day and night, observing to do everything that's written therein then will you make your way prosperous it says so how do you do that not because you're studying harvard or you're studying in stanford study the word of you can do those for your earthly vocation but if you really want to tap into supernatural wisdom and study the things of god it's great to go to church we go to church we i mean when i say go to church go to we go to sunday worship services you are the church mm -hmm. but we go to sunday worship services we love singing and praising and fellowshipping with our fellow christians but we do life we do the body of christ by coming home studying every day by applying it every day witnessing to people every day praying for people our front door of our house is a revolving door of ministry and we want to encourage you to make your life the exact, maybe it's your cubicle. Let it be a revolving cubicle of ministry where people just keep coming and they just know you're the one-stop shop for something good. That's good. We love you guys and hope you got a lot out of today. I'm going to pray for you before we go. Father God, we just thank mm -hmm. you so much. And we thank you, God, that you are illuminating, opening up, um, giving us discernment and wisdom on the things that are being taught here. God, your word, it says, that cannot be understood with mere intellect because it's spirit. So, God, people need to have your spirit to be able to understand the messages of the spirit. They may read the black and white, but they will never fully understand the abundance that you have in the word of God. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, that you give us the ability, you give us the privilege not only to read, but to interpret, not only to listen, but to hear. Yeah. God, we thank you today that you give that ability, you give that hunger and thirst to the people that they want more from you. So God, that it gives them the righteous boldness to stand up in the midst of adversity and wage war in the heavenly realms. Thank you, God. God, we just pray today that if there's anyone that wants to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or that needs to be baptized in water, ready to repent of their sins, God, that you just convict them today, that today is the day. Let them private message us, let them reach out to their, their church leader, God, so that we can wrap our arms around them and begin to mentor them in the faith so that they can mature in all things spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Have a great day today and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody.